by the reactions and feedbacks that we got, uh, both from religious people, both from Muslims, both from uh, Buddhists also, or uh, atheists. Uh, everybody felt something from after the film. Yeah. We're here today for a discussion with Haji Alexander Jurevich, director of A Cross in the Desert, which won Best Feature, Best Director, Best Cinematography at this year's Bison Fest Film Festival. Alexander's film tells the story of Saint Paraskeva, a pious young woman who was known for her charity and who left her home to spend many years battling sins in the Jordan Desert. We follow her path from an ordinary girl to one of the most beloved and celebrated female saints in Christianity today. The film also shows the relations between Christians and Muslims in the 10th century. Baraskeva and a Bedouin Arab girl named Zainab, I believe I pronounced that correct, both from different cultural, social, and religious backgrounds, share the same emotions, values, love, and friendship. Welcome. It's good to have you with us. Thank you for inviting me. Congratulations on several wins this year for your film Across in the Desert. Uh, you chose to portray, as I mentioned, Saint Paraskeva. Was there something that drew you to the saint in particular, the reason you thought her story would be a particularly compelling? Yes, uh, actually, uh, the film is based on a book. The book was written by my mother. Uh, my mother is uh, one of the most, uh, most famous uh, Serbian writers. Uh, and uh, uh, she wrote that novel uh, 20 years ago, actually, in 2001, uh, more than 20 years now. And um, um, I lived with the story about Saint Paraskeva through all my childhood because uh, uh, she is not our patron saint, uh, but we, re we respect her. She is uh, beloved in uh, all Orthodox world and especially in Serbia. Yes. And uh, how to say she's she's in a way the most famous and most beloved uh, female saint. And um, her story is really amazing. And uh, what connected me. Uh, to it, it was how actually uh, she chose her way to the God. And it was uh, interesting to, to portray because there are no such films. We usually watch films uh, about biblical topics and uh, of course about uh, Christ or apostles or um, topics from all of New Testament. But uh, in this modern way, uh, we don't have uh, so many stories about uh, how to say, regular people who became uh, saints. Yes. Uh, and um, what, what was interesting about the uh, story, because, uh, you know, we, they, when you have a, a, how to say, challenge to make a, a spiritual film, an orthodox and really uh, deep on uh, many levels, so that uh, a lot of audience can understand it, uh, both, uh, like, to say, peasant and, uh, and the patriarch or a doctor or some doctor, uh, with a PhD degree, you know, you need to uh, have a wide range of, um, of emotions and uh, also symbolism. And uh, it is really, uh, how to say, thin line, you know, not to be over-directed or not to be like finger in the eye uh, or not to be uh, in a way um, common. So what I wanted to, to, to try is to tell a story about human beings. To, uh, to audience can, uh, so that the audience can relate to her and uh, feel her closer. Because when we think about saints, we say, okay, that is somebody who lived a long time ago and now he's in heaven, he watches over us. And we don't start from the main, main thing that uh, it was a person. And uh, her struggles and her love for God brought her to the uh, place where she is now. So... Okay. That, that was actually the main challenge. And uh, I know how many people love, love St. Paraskara. So I had a bit of a, of a fear. Uh, will I be, uh, how to say, you know, uh, will I be uh, good enough to, to make that story? But of course, with the prayers and I hope blessing from the saint, I really felt like when, you know, when, uh, when uh, painters, uh, when they're doing icons, Yes. You know, they, we believe that they have, uh, in a way, support of the saint who are they painting. So I really felt that uh, when we were in the Jordan Desert, 
that uh, St. Paraskeva is with us, with the whole crew, and uh, we really had uh, smooth shooting without any problems, and uh, that was uh, really amazing. And uh, what was also interesting about the, the story is that um, uh, actually uh, when you're trying to create a new character, you know, you have icons, people imagine her. So for me, it was um, interesting to see how people will react, you know, when I'm when, when they see my vision of uh, of, of of that story, because uh, it's such a huge uh, huge life, and uh, it's um, actually uh, really hard to uh, put everything from the book in the movie. So I tried to find the essence, and that, uh, as they say, spiritual vertical you know, to, to connect um, Saint to the audience through the screen and uh, by the reactions and feedbacks that we got, uh, both from religious people, both from Muslims, both from uh, Buddhist also, or uh, atheist, uh, everybody felt something from after the film. They, sure. they, the film touched them in a way. So that was actually the biggest impression for me. And the other thing that I think is, is very real today is that people are a bit tired with movies that are just about blowing things up and all of this thriller and I'm sorry to say murder and things of that nature. Yes. And they really want something that will touch them in their heart, something that relates to them personally. So let's talk a little bit about how the film depicts a beautiful friendship between Paraskeva and Zeneb, I believe I pronounced that correctly, right? Yes. Yes. Why was that important? What, what role does that friendship play? Well, as you said, you know, in a way, also St. Paraskeva uh, chose her way and chose to isolate from the world of, in that time, Constantinople, that was the megalopolis in a way, so multicultural city. And then she moved uh, far, far away after pilgrimage to Jerusalem. She moved to Jordan Desert and she spent the rest of her life um, be, I mean, not, not the whole life, but before she came back, uh, she spent in a cave. And um, the, in that time, um, actually, from, it, it's happening in 10th century, but since 8th century, already there, uh, there were Arabs uh, in Jordan Desert, and uh, there were Bedouin tribes. So uh, it wasn't uncommon because... Uh, by their culture, you know, yeah, I, I, I researched a bit and I was, um, what was important for me is, is to uh, show actually, uh, when I was preparing the film, also I was talking with the uh, Jordanian uh, histori his historians and I talked with uh, uh, people there, also the Bedouins who live there now. And uh, uh, they have something really interesting in their, their culture, which is that uh, they're in a way obliged to help someone in need in a desert because they are people from desert they can live not to say easy there but easier than the rest of the world because they are used to it and um, even today when we were shooting we we saw people who live under the tent with a couple of goats and, and camels so it's uh, without electricity without internet without mobile phone and uh, it's, it's it's when you when you see that uh, in, in 21st century you think a bit about uh, everything that we are demanding to have or think that we must have or, uh, or need. Uh, so actually it's, it's the same like, like 10 centuries ago. So um, in the culture of, of Bedouins is that they, they have to help people uh, in need that they uh, stumble upon. So uh, that was the actually in a way, we can say that uh, that that their um, and the, 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 their meeting was uh, by accident. But uh, through the film, we see actually that Zainab was also, in a way, sent by God to be uh, there for Paraskeva, and uh, because Paraskeva's personal struggles were hard enough, <laughs> her inner demons and uh, temptations were hard enough to fight. Uh, she didn't need also to, to fight uh, hunger or uh, uh, to, to think about what, what would she wear or something like that. So in a way, Zainab is, uh, meet her as a girl and as a young girl, and um, she offers her help 
uh, to to bake bread for her, to bring her water and uh, dress dresses, and uh, something that starts as a really simple thing that we can actually relate to in a way that uh, that is something that we see as a material uh, help. In a way, uh, it becomes deep uh, friendship during the years, and uh, in a way. As, I, as you said, uh, that, that Zainab is a mirror or reflection. So Zainab uh, lives a normal life. Uh, she has a husband, she has kids, uh, grand, grandchildren. And uh, in a way, she, she wears jewelry. She um, experienced all the things that uh, Paraskeva uh, rejected, you know, in, in a way. So uh, everything that... Um, helps our lead uh, heroine or Paraskeva uh, to overcome uh, her weaknesses uh, is in a way um, something that she also see in Zainab. Uh, so uh, she follows her for, for the 40 years in a desert and uh, Paraskeva in, in, the, in the end becomes also the godmother of uh, Zainab's uh, grandson. So that really shows how uh, those things that we are nowadays or during the centuries in a way that we are uh, that are dividing us uh, like uh, religion but, but it's more politics than re than religion because there is none of religions are uh, actually saying that we should hate anyone so all the religions um, are preaching love and uh, mercy so uh, in a way all the things that we are today uh, is it different skin or is it a different uh, culture or is it a different uh, language or background or any kind of background so everything that divides us nowadays uh, I, I try to show that it doesn't matter that uh, people from that people that are very different uh, if they are um, trying to to listen to their inner um, inner how to say voice uh, then the, something that is uh, deeply deep in, in ourselves as, as human beings. So uh, emotion, compassion, and uh, love for God, it doesn't matter if we call it Lord or Allah or whatever. So we understand uh, each other and we are connected uh, in much deeper way or have some, some kind of meta. <laughs> and um, as, we just as need to- beings, As human yeah. beings, we have much more in common Yes. than we have not in common. And that's very important. Let me ask you this question. Um, was there anything specifically, let's see, one or two things that you learned or that um, surprised you when you were making the film? Well, I, need, I must say this, is, uh, my, this was my first huge project. Um, I already had one small, uh, small film from 10 years ago, but this was the first uh, and bigger budget and uh, more, more, uh, more challenging project. So it was my first um, also uh, working abroad and with a foreign crew in this uh, type, uh, in, this, in this particular case, it was a Jordanian uh, crew. Um, in Jordan, there are also Christians and Muslims, uh, Arab, and um, there were people in the crew that were also Muslims and Christians. And what amazed me was how the uh, people from the uh, from crew who were Muslims, they really, were attached to the story. And uh, they were, since they heard about it, they were interested to, to find out more. And uh, after we finished, uh, a lot of them told me that it was the most beautiful experience of filmmaking for them so far in a life. Because that's why I said, I really felt that uh, St. Paraskeva was uh, blessing all of us. Uh, and um, after the shooting, I, I, I uh, gifted everyone with a small icon of St. Paraskeva. And um, a couple of them told me, sent me after, after months, uh, they sent me messages that they are still keeping it at their house. They really feel it. Uh, so that's because people told me like, oh, okay, it's, uh, it's orthodox story. It's uh, something that might not be interested for uh, Catholics or for other, for example, Muslims, Buddhists. And I said, uh, first of all, the St. Paris Kava lived, lived before split of Christianity. So, and it doesn't matter. I mean, it, it's, it, we, we should not divide saints in any way. Uh, and um, the, what was surprising for me after a Moscow Film Festival world premiere, um, 
there was a girl that was Buddhist. And um, also on Bison Fest, there was some Asian girl from, uh, I think, Bangladesh or something like that. Something like that. Uh, Christos, who is director of the festival, told me about it. Uh, she, he, he asked her after the screening, uh, is she Christian? She said, no, she's not. And he asked her, why, why did you come? She said, I was interested. I read about it and uh, I wanted to see it, to learn something about uh, Christianity and Orthodox faith. And uh, uh, what what was really amazing is a lot of young people, uh, especially here in Serbia and uh, abroad, also uh, went to see the film. Uh, people who didn't read that, that book, but also the people who read that book in last twenty years, they came and uh, they liked the film, which is which which is for me was uh, really uh, really satisfying in a way. But uh, the biggest impression is that actually. Uh, people who are not orthodox understand uh, and were touched by the by the film and uh, that is actually the point that i'm trying to say that uh, the film as art form and such story can really connect people in a deeper level and uh, mm, people were moved and touched and uh, people and film made them think about themselves which is most important thing well this is a fabulous film a cross in the desert what's next for the film uh, how can our viewers and listeners follow your work? Well, uh, we are trying to figure out, uh, because after COVID, um, all the cinema uh, scheduling is a bit complicated now, and uh, we are trying to find a way to distribute uh, in, uh, the firstly, theatrical, because I always recommend uh, people to see such film in a, in a theater on a huge screen with a good sound, because it's really... Uh, poetical it's sound and, and visuals, yeah, and because of the desert and beautiful landscapes, and it, it needed to be seen as properly. But uh, I'm trying to to see. Uh, I hope in 2023 we'll uh, we'll have a uh, distribution also in the US. Uh, and we are trying. Our Jordanian co-producer is trying to uh, to reach the and try to put a film on uh, Netflix or Amazon Prime so that wider audience can uh, worldwide uh, actually uh, can see the film. Uh, we have uh, plans for um, Jordanian premiere. That's what still still uh, didn't happen because we had uh, a lot of uh, regional and international premieres and festivals. Uh, so we will have um, in uh, by the end of the winter and beginning of spring we will have a Jordanian premiere, Romanian and Greek Greek premiere, and uh, we, uh, we I really hope that uh, uh, also festivals will will uh, get the film and uh, show it to the to the people. And um, what was interesting, for example, I got uh, one email from uh, Greek church from Alabama. And uh, they send me a request to show the film. They have a, a kind of a workshop with the, with the kids. And uh, they found out about the film uh, through the Bison Fest. So they reached uh, to me and uh, asked if they, they want to show it to the, to the kids. And uh, it should be like, and all the, the, all the um, fees from the, from the actual screening, they would uh, donate uh to the and and of course i i, I i'm really happy th that my film will help someone um in a way and uh i think that's the most thing most thing that art can do the most beautiful thing because uh if you can make something that is not just in a way commercial and uh, that is also something that will uh, touch people in a in a spiritual way and uh, that will make them think about it for months or days or whatever. Um, some people watched film uh, more than three or four times. And uh, I really think that as, for me as artists, that is the, the biggest, uh, how to say, satisfaction. And um, I hope that this film, as I got uh, feedbacks from some people, they said, uh, you made something that uh, is out of the time. So. Uh, you can watch this film in you know, 50 years, it will be the same and it will touch people in the same way because it's not local, it's not just for today, it's not something that is modern now and uh, that, what, that will be forgotten in uh, five or ten years. So I really hope that uh, also on, uh, when we finish the worldwide distribution and streaming, we will, 
and give the film for the tel national televisions who, who, wherever they they wanted to show it so uh, it will be the it will be a good chance for the wider audience that cannot go to cinema to see the film and i hope uh, that the uh, film will uh, last in uh, audience's memory for uh, years to come. Very good, Alexander. Thank you so much for being with us. Uh, Across in the Desert, it's got to be a fabulous film, as many of these other films are. Recently, we interviewed uh, Yelena Popovic, and she put out The Man of God, also from Serbia. I wonder, there's yes. something going on in Serbia there. Some kind of holiness is brewing there, where you folks are putting together some of these movies that are really going to bring orthodoxy to the greater world. Uh, we're with you, we're behind you, we support you, and we encourage everyone to go see this film wherever you can. Thank you, Alexander. Thank you very much.